This is a comprehensive, clear, and easy to understand guide on uploading a VRChat avatar. Whether it's your first time in the Unity game engine or you're just looking to refresh your knowledge, I've got you covered. Everything here is timestamped with straightforward explanations of each topic, but I do highly recommend you watch all the way through without skipping around even if you are familiar with some of the topics in order to grasp the full picture of how each part works together. However, I did include a straightforward upload speedrun in case you don't care about anything other than just getting your bot model into the game. I'll be uploading a video hopefully next week, which will be linked below whenever it's up, showing all my essential downloads and tricks that you absolutely need, which will save you dozens of hours and make life so much easier. So with all of that out of the way, let's start with the essential vocabulary that I wish someone told me. Avatars normally come in one of two formats, FBX or VRM. If you have an FBX, then good for you. Your life is easy because that's what VRChat lets you upload. VRM models, virtual reality models, like Vroids, need to be converted, which we will cover later on. Meshes are what make up your actual avatar and all of its parts and accessories and are constructed by polygons slash triangles. Different objects may have their own meshes, but optimized models will use as little meshes and polys as possible. Bones make up all the moving parts of your avatar, from your feet to your fingers, including clothes and hair. The armature is the structure of those bones, and the way that they're stacked is called parenting. So a hand is the parent bone of a finger while also being the child bone of the forearm. But VRChat has very specific ordering and naming rules, so always check the small details like capitalization are correct. Blend shapes, also called shape keys, are what move an avatar's mesh from one shape to another. Normally includes things like blinking, facial expressions, or body sliders, and are always found on the mesh they're affecting. Visemes are the blend shapes specifically for talking, typically one for each mouse sound. Textures are obviously flat images, so UV maps are the instructions basically telling Unity how to wrap those textures around your avatar. A good example is looking at how this cube gets unwrapped in a flat surface. Shaders are what control lighting and visual effects. So you'll create these material spheres for each texture you have, and then the shader effects will control what it looks like in game. Optimized models might only use one material, while others have them broken up into different parts, such as hair and clothes, to act differently even if they are decorating the same mesh. Unity packages are how people send their assets from their Unity project to yours. Whether that's the file of your avatar you bought or a friend sending one to help you out, you can just drag and drop them in. Inside, you'll usually find a prefab where someone has already set up everything for you. Clicking it open should reconstruct everything from the Unity package together. However, prefabs often rely on dependencies. For example, if the avatar you're using uses the popular Poyomi shaders in its prefab, then you need to have imported the Unity package for Poyomi before opening the prefab, because it depends on it. But don't worry, because avatars usually come with instructions on what dependencies they use. Great, now that you understand the essential vocabulary, it's time to set up the VCC, the VRChat Creator Companion. Reminder, if your VRChat account is too new, then you won't be able to upload content. You need to play a little while on an official VRChat account, not Steam or Meta, and get the new user rank before you can hit any upload buttons. But with that aside, the VCC is VRChat's super easy way to organize your projects and keep them updated during version changes so that your stuff doesn't go outdated. VRChat itself runs off the free game engine software called Unity, so it will prompt you to download Unity before anything else. There's many different versions of Unity, and VRChat will prompt you to download the version it currently uses. Right now, they're actually migrating from a 2019 version to 2022, but thankfully the Creator Companion makes converting projects easy, so don't worry about it when it happens. The Unity Hub will have you download its base version by default, so as you're getting that, make sure to hit Android as that will add quest support. And once you have the correct version of Unity, you can revisit the Creator Companion to get going. Start by creating a new project using the avatar template. There, you'll be prompted to automatically install different helpful Unity packages the community has made. I don't want to get too advanced, so just download all the ones that are intended for avatar creation. Great, now we're in. Basic controls are middle clicking and dragging to move around, right click and drag to look around, and scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in or out. Gently tapping arrow keys works too. Every object you have will be located here in the hierarchy, including your avatar. Over here is the inspector, which shows all the options and features of any asset you have selected. These buttons will move, rotate, and scale the objects you have selected, while the big play button at the top enters 
play mode, Unity's way of just turning the game on. It automatically sends you to the camera's view in game, but if you click back to your scene tab, you'll be able to manage everything again. All right, the best way to learn is to start with a blank FBX model. No Unity package or prefabs, because all the knowledge we'll learn by working with this is applicable to all other scenarios as well, which is important for any customizations you do. This is the thing I really wish I had when I started, so that's why I'm showing it to you. I'll be using my own model as an example demonstration. No, I'm gonna be covering a lot of information in a short period of time, so I encourage watching at half speed and pausing as needed. Drag the model FBX into your assets folder and plop it into the hierarchy. By dropping down the boxes, you'll see there's my armature with all the bones and then the body mesh with all my blue shapes. But we need to prep this model first. By selecting the FBX in your assets folder down here, the inspector menu shows us some options. Unity doesn't know what this FBX is unless we clearly tell it, so let's mark the model from generic to humanoid and then apply. After that, we need to check the configuration of the armature and bones. Ah, okay, common problem. The chest bone didn't show up. We can fix that easily by just searching the word chest or just dragging the bone in from the hierarchy. And over here, my bangs showed up where my jaw is supposed to be. VRChat doesn't use a jawbone, so this is Unity trying to just fill it in with something. Either click and delete it or just search none, hit apply, and done. Now let's add the textures and get the material started for shader work. Right click to create separate folders for both organization's sake and drag in your textures from your computer. Then right click to create materials. Then we import the shader packages. The two main shaders that people use in VRChat are Poyomi and Lil Tune. They have very similar features, but I'm gonna show you Poyomi since that's what I use. Just download the latest version off GitHub and drag the Unity package in. Now at the top of the material, you should be able to select the shader that you want to use. Tune shader usually being the best place to start. The albedo is where your texture goes, so use the explorer on the left to click to your texture folder and drag it in. Careful not to click out of the inspector. If there's a part of your texture that's supposed to be transparent or cut out, then make sure your texture has alpha is transparency turned on and make sure the shader using it isn't an opaque one. Use transparent or cut out, otherwise it'll just show up black. Now you can drag the material you made to where it goes on your model. If you have a shader that's in a hard to click spot, you can also assign it straight from the body mesh. You can do a lot of crazy stuff with shaders if you take a few minutes to go through it. A couple examples are masking. You could turn on an effect like an emission and anything white on the mask will receive it and anything black does not. I'll edit textures or make maps just by right clicking it, showing an explorer, and then I use Photoshop. There's also these purple versions of textures you'll see a lot in shaders, which are the normal maps. Those will give visual depth to your textures details without actually having to change the mesh. It's not hard to do as you can literally just find generators for this online. That's everything you need to know to go wild. Just note that if you're uploading a quest avatar, the shader support is way limited, which we'll come back to later in the quest section. All right, it's fizzbone time. Fizzbones are what you add to bones to make them move or interactable. It takes a lot of experimenting to get it right, but the actual setup is surprisingly easy. Open your armature and find the bone you want to add physics to, hit add component and pick Fizz bone. Just drag the bone in as the root and bam, you did it. When you go into play mode and drag your model around, you should see things moving, but if you don't like how they look, you can go back to your bones while in play mode and adjust the settings to your liking. But if you exit out of play mode, the settings don't stay, so I'd recommend you actually copy the values and then paste them back in when you're done. And you could paste them in as a new component onto other bones if you want them to have the same values. Just remember you have to drag in the new root for that new bone. If you don't want the fizz bones clipping through areas of your model, you can add colliders to those parts. For me, my bangs fly through my head, so I create a head collider and drag in the root like before. Once it's adjusted to a good spot, I can go back up to the fizz bone that I want to collide with, add it a collider space, pick the head, and bump that radius up. And lastly, if you want to make your bone interactable, you can turn on the option to grab it, pose it, squish it, or stretch it. Just remember to pick a good radius size. All right, for those of you whose avatars didn't come with facial animations or gestures already set up, you can do that easily yourself. Or just go in and change what gesture is affecting each. Go to the window tab and make sure the animation is open. Drag it to a convenient spot and select your model's body mesh where all the blend shapes are. Hit create animation and name it what you want, such as smile. Then you can click record and slide the blend shape up to create your animation. You can technically make anything in animation, but since this is just a base expression, I'll turn off the record button and slide back my blend shape. 
You can keep doing this for more expressions and just hit off the preview button to go back into your original pose whenever you're done. All right, the smart people stuff that goes behind the scenes in actually making the VR chat avatar animate in different ways are the playable layers. They go really in depth, but for the simple task of just doing face expressions, we can stick with the FX layer here. Assuming you don't have one already, you can make a new one by clicking where it should go and searching for the hands layer. Click onto it, duplicate it in case of any mess ups, rename it to something like this, and for convenience sake, I'm going to drag it somewhere I will remember. Clicking it open brings you into the animator, which already has placeholders set up. Click and drag to select all the existing layers and turn the right defaults on. This goes for both hands, including the idle states. Now just match the animations to whatever gesture you want. Personally, I recommend just putting them on one hand for better control. All right, now that we have literally everything else set up for the model, we can look at the final piece, the avatar descriptor, which needs to be added as a component on your overall object in the hierarchy. Now let's quickly run down it. The viewpoint is where your IRL headset will be in game, so adjust it somewhere between your eyes using the edit button and return. Your model should already have visemes for talking, so just hit auto detect. And for the eyes, you wanna make sure that you've enabled eye look and you drag the correct bones into the right spots here. You can dictate how far they roll in any direction when looking around. I usually stick between 10 to 15. Calm slash excited is how much or how little your eyes look around, while the shy confident slider is how much your eyes look directly at other players. I recommend leaving it in the middle. For blinking, you'll likely have a blink blend shape on your body mesh already, so just drag it in here and pick blink. If you have blend shapes for I look up and I look down, you can add them here. But personally, I leave them out because I like the natural eye roll already anyways. Of course, for your face expressions, you wanna drag in that FX layer you put together and it's time to upload. Click open the SDK tab up here at the top and you'll likely get a bunch of errors at first, but good news is hitting auto fix usually takes care of anything. You can ignore and don't sweat over keyword errors. If you wanna test your avatar before fully uploading it, you can find it in the other tab inside VRChat. Otherwise, it'll just go straight to your account. If it doesn't show up right away, then restart VRChat. Now let's talk about quest compatibility. If you want your avatar to be quest compatible, you'll have to make a second version that fits the optimization requirements listed by the VRChat website. You can either control D with your existing model or drag in a separate optimized prefab you might've been provided, since the rules are pretty strict. As for shaders, you're not allowed to use any shaders except the built-in ones that VRChat provides listed under mobile shaders. It's extremely limited, including no options for transparency, so please keep that in mind. Typically, the only one you should be using for avatars is the Toon shader. If it looks really bright for some reason, like mine did, just turn out this light at the top. Assuming you're all good to go from here, it's time to match the IDs. Every avatar uploaded to VRChat has its own blueprint ID to distinguish it from one another. Since you want both the regular and quest model to show up under the same ID, you can just copy the ID from one and attach it to the other. As long as you do this, the corresponding model will show up for the corresponding user in game. You aren't gonna be building for Windows this time whenever you're ready to upload, so just switch the build target to Android. And there you go. If you're working with a VTuber model in VRM format, including Vroids, you need to convert it to FBX first since Unity doesn't natively recognize VRM models. So you can download the VRM for VRChat converter off the website booth and drag in the Unity package. Click the new tab that appeared at the top of Unity and import the VRM model off your computer. Although the model shows up, not all the pieces are put together very well for VRChat, so if you click the model and go up to click Convert for VRChat, it'll set up a new avatar descriptor for you with all the missing pieces. Now keep in mind, all the things I covered in this video are still relevant. Shaders, fizz bones, avatar descriptor, animations, quest compatibility, and whatnot. If you're having issues, errors, or want to add in things like hair movement, then check back through everything I've already covered in the video. All right, and finally, the 15 second Booth or Gumroad Avatar speedrun. Drag in the correct shader packages or any other dependencies, bring in your model and click open the one that says prefab, check the avatar descriptor to make sure there's no screw ups, open the uploader, click through any errors, and upload. Easy as pie. Nice. And there we go. If this video was helpful to you, then please like and subscribe to catch the part two of this video with all the Unity life hacks and time savers on the next upload. My Discord server is a great place to ask questions or show off your work. And if you wanna hang out in your new virtual self online, I actually run events at the TVRS studio inside of VRChat. 
If you want to support the channel and making more videos just like these, then please consider joining my Patreon, and of course, thank you to my patrons, including virtual VIPs, Alyssa Gretlin, Black Amethyst, Dutchman101, GM, NNN, Penny, Rice600333, Snake8Head, Sally, and Yamazakura.